And now, from beyond our dimension, this is the Jeff Mara Podcast. Here's Jeff. My guest is Holden Lee, who experienced the same light both during his near-death and DMT experience. Holden, thank you for joining me and welcome. Thank you for having me, Jeff. Well, Holden, if you don't mind, let's start with your near-death experience first. And then after that, we'll move on to the DMT. That sounds good. Okay, well, so I was in high school um, and I was coming back from work for the day. And uh, I remember it very specifically, I was supposed to go to an SAT prep class and I did not want to go. So I had my buddy who was driving miss our exit and uh, had him go up a few exits. So by the time we turned around, uh, we'd miss the class. And, uh, and he did that. And I remember getting back on the kind of crossing over the highway to get back on the on-ramp and it had started to rain and we were young and he was a brand new driver. And, uh, I remember him hitting the gas, like speeding up to get back on the highway, but then he fishtailed, uh, cause it started to get raining and raining and everything was slick. And, uh, yeah, and so we're probably going, I don't know, 50, 55, and suddenly we're fishtailing. I'm in the passenger seat. And that's, I just remember everything slowing down completely. And uh, I remember going straight into this fence. And that's when I had these very specific three things go through my mind that uh, to this day, they've just never left. They've always been ingrained as a part of you. And number one was you were going to, you're going to die now. And, and, uh, and that there was just such like a matter of factness about it. Like it wasn't like this, uh, scary thing at all is that you're going to die now. Number two was, I wish I could have said goodbye. And, uh, with that one, I remember seeing like very brief flashes of, uh, my family and friends. Uh, and, uh, yeah. And it was just, it was like what they say. It was just like your life was just a that's and it was there was such a sense of that that it was just such a such a brief moment of time. And I saw their smiling faces. And and then it was like and number three, it didn't say numbers, but it was like and the third one came through. I didn't know if their voices are just like instilled in you. But number three is uh, but they will understand someday. So it was like you're going to die now. I wish I could have said goodbye but they will understand someday. And the third one had this ready-made context that was like, we don't understand death until we're there. And, and you felt bad for leaving the people behind, but you knew, you understood that life was such a flash that it wasn't worth really mourning. You, like, you mourned on the other side momentarily because you felt bad for the people who were mourning you. You didn't necessarily, uh, you didn't mourn the loss of life. So there I am, um, you know, I'm floating at this point. Like you're being pulled away and I'm just floating like you're floating in the sky. That's all I could describe it as like, and just surrounded. I always say utter bliss fails to, fails to capture the sense that was just surrounded in love, surrounded in peace, nothing ever to fear. And then I'm floating in the sky or in whatever realm. Like, I can't say that I feel like I remember clouds, but who knows for sure. It was just this utter in cocoon of peace. And this being was there with me and like almost pulling me up with it. And there was just such a sense of letting go, release. I don't even think at this point you were worried about family you left behind because you knew you were going to be with them again in the next moment. That was all you could really describe it as, as a, an understanding that that life is boom, it's over, and then you're with them. So, you, so you're with everyone again. There's no sense to worry about that. And, uh, and so you're with this light. And then, so, you know, I didn't get to any gate, any pearly gate, or the people are waiting for you and all this and that. Uh, the next thing I know, 
my eyes open and I'm hanging upside down in this wrecked car. My head's basically like the, it's all we flipped off the highway like several times and we're in a business parking lot <laughs> and I'm upside down and I can see I've got blood in my eyes. I've got glass like shards all over, like stuck in my face. And I've just kind of seen through blood. And I had been unconscious for a while. I remember the paramedics were already showing up. Well, kind of when I came to and I could see like, you know, the radiator fluid like dripping down on the floor all around you. So I, I, I remember being like, you should be panicked at this point, but I wasn't because whatever I had just experienced was just, I was still in a state of shock from that. And I was just hanging there still because of the seatbelt. And the paramedics were like, you would have been dead for sure had you not been wearing a seatbelt. But I'm hanging there with this, you know, because of the seatbelt, saved your life, saved your life, wear your seatbelts. <laughs> and, uh, and just, I didn't, I wasn't even trying to get out of the car at this point. I just was thinking, why am I here? Well, I mean, really, I felt like, why am I here? I felt this moment. And, you know, you're a teenager. You're just trying to talk to girls and you're awkward and, and like, and I, and, you know, I, I was like, oh, I want to be back where that was. That was where it's at. <laughs> and so I remember paramedics kind of, they were able to crawl into the car uh, from underneath, help me down, got me out, ambulance, everything at the hospital. And, uh, and I'm with my buddy who, you know, he was driving uh, and he, and we were at the hospital together and he, and he was like, what's wrong with you? It's like, you've been through this before. I remember that I'm very specifically saying that and just so I didn't say anything. We've talked about it since we're still friends to this day, but I didn't say anything then, but just, I was in a state of shock, I think. And from what I had just felt or just the accident or both or whatever you go through in that moment. Uh, but he did not have anything like the same experience I had. He had no near death experience. And we've talked about that since uh, how we could have such a weird moment together and have two completely different things. Um, and so, yeah, so we got out of the hospital, got released that, that night. Uh, and I remember coming home and I was like, I was still just, my parents were just kind of, you know, they had picked us up and they, uh, you know, I just wasn't really reacting to anything. And I was just still in this kind of state of shock. And I remember taking a shower that night and that's when it all hit me and I remember breaking down and actually falling to my knees and just wail sobs. And, uh, you know, it brings tears to my eyes just thinking about it, but just wailing, sobbing. And uh, that would, you know, you know, I went to sleep that night and you'd like to, you know, I've tried to talk about it and write about it before, you know, um, but you've never been able to describe it. But, uh, you think that's where it ends. And I feel like for me, that is where the story just begun. Who do you think that being was that was with you during the experience? I think now I would, I, you know, I, I think I told you, you know, when we were corresponding briefly, but I didn't come from a family that had any sort of like, they were like a very hardcore Catholic family, very business family, uh, you know, and so sensing something like that wasn't in a norm of conversation. So I don't feel like I ever had a community to talk about this with. And it led to, you know, a lot of trouble in the next 10, 15 years for me, a lot, you know, sort of a downfall, if you will, you know, of trying to, of, you know, a life overwhelmed by what I'd gone through. Um, I feel like that being now would be a, a definite, a guide if not a family member who's passed on something like that, I think a spiritual guide. Well, it's too bad that you didn't get this in your Catholic education. And, and I wasn't even aware of this because I wasn't raised Catholic, but sure. I recently had a Catholic priest on and we were talking about how everybody has a guardian angel. Yeah. So perhaps that was your guardian angel. I think so. I mean, I, 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 you know, so I know. So I don't even have to really say think anymore just because of the sense that was there. Um, and I feel like that angel has been with me ever since. Uh, and as we 
you know, as I said, I've, I've had a DM tri- D- DMT trip where that same guardian, I mean, there was the sense that it was the same being with you there. And I've told people about that DMT trip, and we'll get into that. But uh, a lot of people say that is very abnormal, what happened to you. I think one of the cool things that happened to you is that you didn't experience the trauma of the wreck. It, it appears from what you're saying, you were already out of your body before it even happened. Yes. Yeah, I must have. I ejected instantly. I mean, yeah, because I don't, don't remember any of the wreck. I don't remember rolling. All oh, the last thing I remember is the car hitting a chain link fence and starting to turn sideways. That's the last thing I remember. And then waking up in the car, hanging upside down. And funny enough, I had been back to that spot since then. And there's no longer a chain link fence. There's a guardrail. <laughs> That's, and I believe that was our accident that, that uh, had that put in place. So, yeah, I don't think I did experience that actual accident trauma. Can you describe the light a little bit more for us? Ah, uh, sure. Um, I, I wouldn't say that it was like, you know, it's almost like uh, it could have been a person, it could have been an entity, like a shape and everything, but I wouldn't go out of my way to say that it was. It was just an aura of brilliancy, of just this, brilliant light that should have blinded you but didn't and you could look right at it but it's always like right sort of on the on the peripheral it's never like right in front of your face it was always like right here on the you know to this you know if you were like looking up and to the right out of the corner of your eye there was a sense that you're like looking that way at this at whatever this was think it was your guardian angel and and I just the utter sense of brilliant peace that it brought that you know it's hard even now you know you get back into life and you forget about the that moment and you have to remind yourself of that moment when you get caught up in the world and the craziness and everything that's going on and you get scared and you fear for you know we have kids and we have wives or husbands and you want to you want to live a long life and the state of the world right now, you look at it sometimes and you're like, you know, maybe we don't, we don't get that. And it, and it kind of freaks you out because you want that you, everyone's dream, you know, mostly if you're doing well is to have enough to eat, have enough, you know, on your plate and you get to experience life, you know, every, every stage, you know, from birth to, to death. And there's like this, um, threat to us right now that we might not get that in this modern world. They're constantly bombarding us. But the message I can give when I come back to peace and through meditation and, you know, yoga is, is you just have to let go. There's no fear. Live, you're, you're here to live a good life. You're here to, you know, test things out and, and advance your consciousness. I believe we're really here to excel the consciousness of the human race. I think that's one of the things we're here to do. I, I mean, one of my crazy senses that comes through of what I experienced and everything I've read and all the, you know, psychedelics I've done since is that we are almost an experiment. We're a grand experiment, almost taking the soul into a very primitive creature. Uh, that would be the human that's first instinct is to battle and fight. It's like the fight or flight and the, and the fear that comes with that. And, and I think one of our goals here on earth is to, is to, we can't see it cause it's such a long timeline, but it's to do our little part in, in evolving consciousness for humankind. Do you feel that we're here to overcome the human animal? And take that to the next level? I think so. I think on a very personal level we are. And then as a whole, we also are. And the whole we can't really see because it's so large. But on a personal level, if you are living your designed best life, you are you are overcoming the weaknesses, your fears that you see most in yourself, which I have not overcome. I've gotten to a better place, but I've got a lot of work to do. Uh, you, you're, you're a, a well-lived life is doing your best 
to overcome a difficult hand that you've been dealt, uh, more or less. And, uh, you know, and that's, that's easy to say sometimes when you're white and college educated, and then you look at people who are, you know, are born into war or, you know, die very young or disease. And, you know, part of the, and I've read books on this and I've heard other, you know, very spiritual people speak on this, but I really do believe that we have kind of chosen this life and we're working out roles with each other and we're, you know, sometimes I'm your father and sometimes you're my father. And if we screwed up something in this life, I don't know if they're screwing up is the right term, just didn't accomplish what we were supposed to in this life. Then we come back in another life. Or if you are abusive to a spouse in one life, you're going to be abused in the next life. And you're going to have to overcome these, like these scenarios. And we, uh, yeah. So it's very much like you come back here time and time again to do this. And I've heard Recently, and I know I, people speak on the idea that we're getting trapped here. Somehow I've heard that and I don't necessarily like I don't know. How could you know anything? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But my sense is that is that that's not the case, that this is all that it, it's all very much like you're in a peaceful, beautiful realm of love and just and that and that this is more of a school that that you come back to. Um, and I, you know, maybe, maybe we, you know, how do, how do I know, well, you know, everyone's experience is their own and you have to respect that. But, uh, I don't get a sense that some evil entity, I've only recently started seeing that around that some evil entity is trying to like trap us into coming back to life. And I just, I don't, from what I experienced, this is a, this is a benevolent, beautiful energy in a grand, you know, grand thing that we cannot start to comprehend and and it's doesn't have truly evil and any evil intent for us even though we see evil on earth i i guess that would come back to it's our job to try to slowly overcome the nature of humankind from the worst to like we literally could create heaven on earth if everyone just set down the greed and the war and, and and it's very much i know that's I mean, my wife says well you sound mormon she goes that's kind of what mormons talk about i'm like well maybe they got it right because that's sort of the sense of all this is that you could you're really our long-term goal here and it's a long-term goal it's not a quick thing is to advance and and who knows that's just my thoughts of everything i've experienced and uh it could be something completely different I know you were young when you had the experience, but do you feel like you changed a lot afterwards? Yeah, I uh, and that's where I think I would say the next day uh, was the start of the real story. Uh, I was very much, you know, I was an ath athletic and, you know, wasn't a super student, but I was a pretty good student. And, I, you know, I just was going to follow the norm for the life that was set before me. The next day I woke up and I woke up with energy just coursing through my body. And, I, and when I say that, I mean, in a very real sense, I had, I had energy going from my head down to my feet and, and you could manipulate it and you could think. And if you went to meditate, because my dad was into meditation, he had taught me the basics of it and you could meditate and you could form it right in the middle of your forehead. And, you know, and I didn't know, anything about kundalini or you know the chakras at this point i was just a kid who had just gone through an accident and suddenly i was just buzzing vibrating i mean weirdness too like like you know i'd never say for sure but you'd walk into room and lights would flicker and stuff like that it was like an intense energy buzzing throughout you uh yeah and i would say it completely screwed me up not having any community to uh, discuss this with. I never even told my parents. It was just not something that they would understand. Uh, never told anybody, you, not, not your friends, not anybody. So you were just sort of all of a sudden alone and uh, just the sense that you were reading people's minds and the sense like 
you felt their you felt their empathy and their soul and you 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 could just feel the warmness of the human like the soul and uh and the and then the world outside like you felt all of it you felt the pain like of people suffering and in war or depression like i could be in a room with somebody and suddenly within 5 minutes if they were a downer i could feel all their weight on me and if but if they're alive and just connected to the right energy i just was alive and and so and so this hit me at 17 years old the day after this accident i ended up yeah i'm basically leaving uh leaving my whole life behind and moving out west uh just to try to get away from things and uh you know i've i've mentioned in you know, I've made a few YouTube videos, but I don't think I've mentioned any more than the psychedelics. It wasn't, you know, early on, it, it was, it was drugs and alcohol trying to figure out how to, how to shut this, this down. And even though I, I, there was a very spiritual sense with it, you knew it was like a connection to something you knew. I, you know, I think I knew that it was God, that it was connecting you to, or the universe or whatever you want to call it. Um, you know, I think those terms are sort of, you know, interchangeable when people are like, oh, you don't call it God. Well, I'm like, it's just the one thing it's there's whatever the giant energy is, you know, running this whole show. And so I ran, I ran and I, I was a freak and I really just uh, kind of hid from life and hid from people. And I don't think anyone would really know who I was. And I would, I was writing and I had certain successes here and there and I found success in certain areas, but uh you know, I would, I would even run from that. Um, and, uh, I don't think it was until, uh, my mom's passing that everything really started to change on that end. So that would have been like 15, 20 years after the accident, you know, I was getting along. Okay. It was sometimes better than others. Um, and then, uh, my mom got sick and I, I still remember you know, the day I found out she was sick, I was high on drugs. And, uh, and I, I remember just like barely being able to, um, to truly process that. It's, I've never told that. So here we go, YouTube. But uh, <laughs> yeah, so, you know, I remember walking around the block, just like trying to process that. And, you know, she had cancer and it was aggressive. And, you know, I got about a, less than a year left after they had said you might get 10. So it was really aggressive. And so, you know, I often think um, that my mom's passing was sort of her spirit was very, she was very, she, you know, they're Catholic and, uh, you know, whether, whatever you feel about Catholicism, they were also very ingrained in the community, uh, constantly taking care and feeding the poor. And she was a saint on earth. And uh, she was definitely heavily felt in my life after she passed. And there were even, I wrote a couple down to remember to tell you that there were on, there were a few events of really ghost type activity that happened with her after she passed. So after, like, first of all, I could just keep on the track after she passed, it was all of a sudden easy to quit everything. It was all of a sudden, like I had a helping hand just right with me that took away addiction in a certain sense. It wasn't completely easy. I mean, I had to get off antidepressants, anxiety pills. We're talking some pretty major street drugs that you weren't like dropped down in the gutter, but you were dabbling with far too much. And, uh, and I, and I just got clean. And, and so I, so it was almost like a weird full circle. And I, and, I, and at that point in my life, that's when I really started to meet a few people who knew about kind of what I was going through learned that I had a Kundalini awakening, which strangely enough, they say beyond the yoga and meditation, people who have a near death experience will suddenly have that as well. Yeah. And I was like, well, there we go. I, I believe that's what happened. Uh, and so, yeah. So kind of that whole time around, you know, struggling with what had happened and, uh, you know, not able to cope with it. And then one, and then my mom passed. And then suddenly, all of a sudden, being very able to cope with it, you know, and then, uh, so for instance, the night my mom died, 
which I think is crazy. I, I remember my brother waking me up in the middle of the night and saying, mom passed. And I remember getting up and uh, we we're going and we we're going to walk to the car and go through the kitchen and into the garage. And uh, I remember right as I walked by the phone, it rang. And this is like, you know, 2.33 in the morning. She starts ringing. And I pick it up. Hello. No one's there. Nothing's there. Don't think too much of it. I'm half asleep. Hang it up. Go over to hospice. Do our thing. We come back. A couple hours later, a few hours, like sunrise. My brother and I, I'm in the kitchen. We're having coffee. Exhausted. You know, we've been through the whole last ringer. So we're just sort of like almost relieved at this point that she's out of pain. And uh, it's like, oh, who called? And I had asked, I remember I did ask my family. I was like, who called us? And no one had called. And I go over the phone and I pick it up. There's no record of the call. There's no caller ID. And it was like the same Kundalini energy. Just my whole body exploded. And it was like, that was mom, like in a little saying goodbye. It was the same phone where she was, would talk for hours with my sister. You know, so it was like very much her phone right there at the table. And, uh, and there's that sense. And then another one, which I thought was amazing. This my this is a great one. We were at her funeral and C Catholics, the priest does this incense thing where they light, you know, the incense, a little waver and swing it around. And, and so at the funeral, the priest is trying to light this thing for 10 minutes. Won't start even changes it out. Like it's a very part of the ritual won't start. And he finally just gives up after 15 minutes, continues the funeral as is. After it's done, he comes to my brother, my dad and I, and he's like profusely apologizes for that not working. And we are all just looking at each other and half, half laughing. And when we got out of there, we were like, oh my God, that was mom. Mom hated the incense, hated it. Like spoke about it many times, despising the incense smell wafting through the church. And it did not work. And he said that was the only time that's ever happened. Oh, that's amazing. <laughs> yeah. So uh, she's a powerful, powerful being. And, and I do feel like, you know, she helped, you know, really helped me from more, you know, she was able to help more from the other side than she ever was in person, I think. Yeah. Well, let's fast forward to the DMT experience where you saw the light again. Yes. Okay. So, yeah. So I'd done, you know, I'd gotten very much into psychedelics in my healing process. Uh, and this would be my first time ever doing DMT. And I had not expected to do that. I was on a hike, camp, like a camping hike uh, with a buddy in uh northern california and uh so so we're just up hiking and we're camping along this lake and he has dmt and he wants me to you know ask me if i want to smoke and i was you know I, i've said this in another video but i was freaked out i was i had done some pretty hefty trips around that time and so I, and I had some anxiety, you know, I had some real de depersonalization after like a mega 15 gram, uh, psych, uh, you know, uh, psilocybin dose that it took a couple of years to sort of get the brain back into place after that. Uh, but you know, I'd always wanted to do it. So we did it. So we're, we're smoking DMT on this lake shore and, uh, and I remember, you know, he's kind of coaching me. He's not smoking. He's coaching me. And, uh, and, uh, you know, and I'm kind of doing it, nothing right away, keep taking it. And suddenly I'm blasting off and I'm going through just this, mm, like light realm, just, just like, it felt like you were just blasting through some weird video game hole, uh, where just, you couldn't describe it was like. It was truly ego death. And a lot of people, I've heard a lot of people talk about how they're scared of it. And I don't know if it was from the near death experience, but I didn't have that sense. I didn't have that sense that I was ever afraid, even blasting off. I just remember being like, just like, like watching this and seeing weird little things happen, 
kind of on the side of these light areas, like, I don't know, like kind of scary things, like, like almost like alligators or some, something like that. And then, yeah, just seeing some kind of scary things, but you're just sort of observing it. And then all of a sudden I'm in space. I'm just, there's no more light. And by the way, this guy told me, he goes, that's very strange that that happened because everything was dark and I was just floating in space. And I remember seeing across the sky, just this light kind of coming right at you. And it came right up into me like, and it was just there, this presence. And it, what was so funny about it, and I think I talked about this in the video, funny in retrospect, is, is that it like, it didn't know you were there. And it was like, it's all of a sudden you showed up in its space. And it was like, oh, you're here. <laughs> and this light just floated at you. And suddenly it's that same peaceful warmth. There's no thing like it wasn't, didn't say I'm the same being that was with you in your near death experience. It was just the sense that it was. And, and I think back on them, like, well, why would you even think that while you're on shooting out of your body on this trip? I don't think you'd have the sense to think that even, but there is just this peaceful warmth about it. And it was just like those three things that were ingrained before me very matter of factly, which I don't think I thought about this until I've just talked to you. You're going to die now. I wish I could have said goodbye, but they'll understand it. That must have been that being before it even appeared to you, guiding you through that moment. And what this being guided me through this moment was very much like it said, it basically was like, I don't expect to see you here again until it's your time. And then I woke up and I was back on the shore. Do you feel like that experience spiritually transformed you in any way? How could it not? I, I mean, it's just so, I don't talk about all this stuff that often. I made a little YouTube channel, I've made a couple of videos, but it's a very controlled environment. You're like, oh, here's what I'm going to talk about now. You don't, you're not really thinking free flow, like I'm talking to a psychiatrist like you. <laughs> so, so it's like, how could it not change you to be like, okay, I rolled off the highway all this energy came around me. These three things have never left my head. And I was enveloped in peace and love and perfection. And like, and then in this DMT trip, 20 years later, whatever it was, 25 years later, the same thing is all of a sudden there. And you're like, so what's going on here? Well, you know, it makes you think, you know, I, you know, I've read enough to, kind of un enough in this realm now after I kind of grew up a lot to know or or s strongly feel I should say that that these are these are dimensions these are realms these are you know these aren't some finite end wall that we're just gone they're just realms that we don't have the ability to see into uh and and so I guess it would make sense that the same entity because I don't Feel like I was, I mean, maybe you experienced ego death in that trip, but you, I didn't sense that, you know, I think you're on a drug. You're, you know, I think there is a sense you're dead in that moment. Maybe it's the same thing coming back in that moment because it's confused by you being there. And it, and it is guiding you again. I don't, I don't know, but I do know it gave me in a spiritual sense, it gave me a feeling that everything is right here in front of our faces everything is right around us. I have this very much sense since since then that that space is only it goes as deep as we can search, but we're never going to find life in outer space. It's all behind a dimensional wall. And they're not coming from across billion miles of galaxy. They're coming from right next to you, basically. That's some kind, I mean, I've read some of that. I've seen some of that on TV, but th those are the things that ring very true to kind of the drug experiences and the near death experiences is it's not out there. NASA can search for a billion years and I don't think they're going to find what they're looking for. I think what they're looking for is something that's a near death experience can lower the curtain on or, uh, or, or the right psychedelic experience can lower the curtain on or, even the right trance 
meditation or yoga, stuff like that. Yeah. So everything's right here. It's just changing the frequency like a radio dial to be able to see it. Right. Right. Yeah, absolutely. I think I, I would, you know, I, we're not going somewhere else. Space, I think, is we're like ants looking across a beach and, you know, and we can get a little better and create better tools, but, but everything is right, right within reach. And I think that explains, you know, a lot of like ghosts or, or entities being able to communicate with you, you know, even dreams, you know, so after my mom died, I had this like, you know, very specific dream. And I looked it up afterwards and people talk about being visited in dreams. And, and it was like exactly what happened. I remember coming back to my childhood home, like I'd just been gone and coming through the front door. And as I came through the front door, like the energy just exploded in my head, like the full body, just Kundalini energy, just, and I was, and in the dream, I was like, mom's here. And I went through the house and down the same steps, like everything the same. It was the house, every step. It wasn't some random place and going downstairs and, and, and downstairs was the laundry room where, you know, old school Catholic family, mom was doing laundry a lot. And uh, she was just standing in the doorway, like just standing there smiling. And I remember just the energy just glowing as I went up to her and I gave her a hug. And it was truly this very spiritual saying goodbye that was like no other dream I've ever had. It was, it was a very much spirit, you know, saying hello in their sleep. Do you feel that dreams are our imagination or astral traveling to different realms at night? I mean, that's a good question. I, it's hard. I, who knows if everything's different for different people? Because you hear people talk about what if a dream is no more than the playing out of another reality? You know, it, and that could be the astral travel or projection. You know, I think psychiatrists and psychologists like to say we're working out our fears and, you know, maybe, maybe there's some of that, but, um, uh, so there's an often, there's a sense often that dreams are so are more vivid and real to people than actual real life. And I've heard that talked about, you know, in the spiritual world. Um, but I think that's true is people will have like this near death experience. And then that feels like the real world. And suddenly life feels like the dream. And I can definitely connect with that idea. And I do feel like dreams are some kind of in between where we can get, I mean, and again, I, I'm a person who like, I never openly really talked about any of this until recently. And so I, I never say anything with like, 100% conviction, you know what I mean? I'm never like, this is the way it is. I just don't know. It's just my experience. And so what I th like to think is maybe it's a way to get information. Like dreams are a way for your guides or family who's passed over to give you information and help you work through your shortcomings in life. So maybe it is working through fears, but just on a more deeper level than they discuss, you know, in mainstream science. Maybe it's really more metaphysical that entities are helping you through these processes of working through your fears. I mean, the one thing I haven't talked about yet is, you know, part of the things that led to, you know, sort of my downfall and through addictions and depression and all that is once I was back and once I had that energy, I could not connect anymore to people, to the world around me. Everything seemed like utter nonsense. People, whether they were, you know, status or buying things or pursuing endeavors that made no actual difference to the world, it was like you could just, I felt that I could see through all of it and it felt so empty and so, so bottomless, like that was the depression. The depression was suddenly you're awake in a world that's asleep. I guess that's the best way I could say it. You're awake in a world that's 
everyone's doing the wrong thing and everyone around, not everyone, many people are doing the right thing, but so many, the, what you see on TV, what you hear in the media, everything that's being sold to you is evil. And I'm not saying that in a heaven or hell kind of way. Who knows? I, I hope there's no true hell that anyone would have to go to. Um, but there is a very sense of like, even now it's, I think it's more applicable today in this current climate and society the tv shows the the music and you're maybe you're just an old guy but like everything like the media for sure is turned up a hundred percent on everybody and i'm not taking any media side it's whatever side you're into like they are just manipulating you to watch more of it. And there, are there dangers in this world? Yeah, there's a lot of dangers and there's a lot of horribleness going on, but they're keying you up times 10. And it's like, but then, so there's that. And then you're seeing the world around you. And yeah, after this experience, like you're just detached from it. You're just, it's so overwhelming and sad, but you can't be a part of it. You, you just are watching it and you're trying to do your little part by being good to people in your life. And that's as simple as just, I always am conversating with the checkout people at the grocery stores and just hanging out and talking to them for a while. And, you know, whoever, just like make the world that you can affect a better place. Remember that your time here is so finite and then you get to go back to this beautiful place just like be really good to people and and constantly check yourself with with when you're short on time or patience just remember that you don't really have anywhere to be i think i think that's what i could say about that if we get back to entities and space and aliens and stuff i've had guests that have seen ETs on the other side, and I've had guests after their experience start seeing UFOs and or having contact. Have you had anything like that happen to you after your experiences? Well, we have de we definitely had a weird UFO thing happen um, when we were younger. Uh, so, well, one, we could just talk about that UFO thing real briefly because it didn't go too much beyond this. It was just a strange sighting. We had just gotten up, we were going camping up north uh, where I'm from, you know, all the stars in the sky out. We're, we've set up camp, we're making dinner. We got up there late and, uh, and all of a sudden just sitting, it was not, it was like out to the road, you know, quarter mile at best was a ufo whatever you want to call it just hovering there with lights like i remember i can't say for sure but a few lights and it was just sitting there and you're thinking i remember being like thinking it was military or something like that and uh and then all of a sudden it just crossed the entire sky over a lake over the horizon in less than a second it just shot out and it was gone it was like it was just hovering there i don't know if it saw us or whatever i mean this was before my near-death stuff and it just shot across the whole sky uh and then it was gone and i experienced that with my entire family <laughs> which is very interesting it is interesting yeah you know that gets into whether i don't know I see a lot of what's being talked about right now in the world, like the government, you know, revealing things on UFOs. And I, I, I believe that these things aren't coming from deep space. If they are, they're coming from realms right around us or dimensions. And I believe what the government is feeding us is probably just propaganda for like some great new technology they have. Uh, so I, so I always say, I believe in UFOs. I believe in aliens. I believe, uh, in all of that. I just don't think what we're hearing about right now has anything to do with that. <laughs> I, I don't know. Before we started recording, we were talking about meditation and binaural beats. 
And you mentioned that you had gotten involved in meditating, and at some point it was attracting entities. Can you tell my audience about that? Okay, sure. So that was, yeah, I was, yeah, your question, I was like, oh, that could be my part two to that. So, yeah, so, I mean, I can get very into trance meditation and very much feel like I'm communicating with entities during during the trance meditation your whole body's just buzzing and you are out of it basically i I don't know if it's astral projection i'm not really trying to go places but you're i feel like i've gotten messages before and this is part one of the you know your question um like for instance one time i came back from trance meditation and it was just like downloaded in my brain it goes and then it comes back to dark matter and i'm trying to find you know at cern and all that and they're like and it was like dark matter is consciousness and that's what that was just a message it was like dark matter is consciousness it's just expanding and contracting consciousness and that's an entity that they're never going to be able to figure out um so anyway but also yes so i did these crazy like doing these dmt trans meditations on youtube and going very deep and for an hour just body buzzing just and there was a time before the birth of my first daughter where after I had started that, and I've always, you know, ever since that accident, I will see light and little orbs. But like, after I started that, they were just like, in your face. And they were there. And I started having these night terrors. And there's very much a sense that I, I had allowed something malevolent to come through within those meditations. I mean, I, it was constant night terrors every night just like right after I had started doing that, it was like, uh, you know, a demon, like right, right at your bed, you know, and starting to try to like, come at you. And I would be screaming or trying to scream and my trying to wake up your wife next to you. And, you, you know, sometimes she'd wake up, sometimes she wouldn't. Uh, yeah. And then there was a, yeah. So I feel that that, I looked that stuff up. And then again, of course, you know, I was a novice with all this stuff. So a lot of experimentation without really knowing what you're doing. And, um, and there are a lot of people who are like, yeah, be careful with this stuff. You can bring back sort of some nasty entities with you. And I was, yeah, I feel like that's had to be what I did. It was creepy. I mean, after I had started that, there was a creepy sense, even in the house that things were like watching you uh like almost like a haunting uh just a very different uneasy sense uh and so i would say if anything yeah some of that i brought back for that time and i think i told you before after the birth of my daughter all went away it just stopped it it never had one again never had another night there again yeah i wonder very weird i wonder what about the birth changed everything i don't know do you have any speculation? No. Yeah. Yeah, I have no idea. I mean, maybe, you know, maybe just uh, a cleansing. Maybe a cleansing of the palate by well, the angels. Well, do you feel like this entity that was around you the whole time was malevolent? No. No. So I what? felt it. Well, are you... I felt like the entity since the near death, I felt was very... It was always a good positive energy. The entity, the malevolent energy, yes. After the YouTube trance meditation stuff, that's there was a sense of evil within that, yes. Mm. Yeah. And so, and that was a very brief period of like three, four, five months where it was like intensely weird and strange and these night tears. And I would, I could see purple, you know. I could see purple energy with my eyes open sometimes just standing like in the room, like, and I, and I'd seen other purple energy before that didn't have any sense of negativity. So I feel like if anything, it was like weirdly uh, mimicking or something like that, mimicking a good energy to get in or followed something in. And uh, yeah, after the birth, I don't know if there was, the other spirits were able to cleanse it out. I stopped doing it. I think I even did meditation and prayer more in a calm way mm-hmm. just to clean that out. And it stopped after the birth of my daughter. Yeah. Well, would you recommend people not to listen to those certain videos that you did? Do you think it's a bad idea? Here's the thing. I, I don't know if it's a bad idea. I think 
I've always carried a very strong current of energy with me since that Kundalini awakening. And so I have always been able to even right now, if I just sit for two seconds and focus, I can have an energy build in my forehead and run it all the way down my body. If I want to think, you know, people talk about this healing. Now I've been working with that, like healing your body with that energy and you can focus on a certain zone, your body, and I can feel that energy start to like it envelops an area. So perhaps it was just the fact that I have that uh, extra ability if you want to call it that, that it was more dangerous for me. I don't know if everyone has to worry about that stuff. I've done, I still do the meditations. I just, I can control now. I think before you're just like, I can let it go. I can just go with this. I can go wherever this wants to go. And I can just let this energy envelop me and I can allow my energy to build and just go nuts. And I think now when I meditate, um, I don't do any of that. I still do some binary beats and stuff like that, but I do very much like I keep it more focused. I keep the energy more focused and just about the breath work and not letting it. I, I, I don't know if I really need to try to astral project anymore and travel, you know what I mean? And experiencing, like, I think I told you too, it's why, I, you know, I talk about the psychedelic experiences now, but I don't need to, I don't want to do it anymore. I feel like my mind's in a good place and I've had my experiences and I can talk and teach about it, but I, you know, there's just certain things you want to keep at bay because, you know, you know where they can lead. After watching this podcast, people may want to reach out to you and ask you questions. Are you open yeah. to that? I'm open to that. Yeah, for sure. For sure. What's yeah. the best way to contact you? Um, well, Gmail is Holden Lee 333 at gmail.com. And then uh, really on the social medias, I have the YouTube, I have a teeny little YouTube page that's at Holden Lee 333. Uh, so those are probably the best two ways to get a hold of me. All right. I guess they can leave you comments in your YouTube videos or questions. Yeah, sure. Absolutely. Yeah. I've got a video, uh, I've got a few videos that talk all about these experiences. I've got one that talks about a, uh, a 15 gram uh, psilocybin trip that I took that, you know, that I very much met God uh, for a half an hour and then sunk into sort of a pit of hell for six hours where it was real, real. And who knows, talking about that with you, maybe the, maybe those are things you brought back with you too. I mean, your arms were your legs. It, it, it was, time did not exist. It, it was hell is what you've heard depicted as hell. It was knowing you're insane and not being able to do anything about it. Like I very much knew I was insane. There was no such thing as time. Arms are coming out of your legs. You're my, I remember sitting on a couch, my flannel shirt was going on forever and ever and sands a time type thing. And you're like, yep, they're going to put me in an institution when they find me <laughs> it's like that kind of thing. So, so yeah, so I've got videos on that, uh, the, the near death experience, the, the, uh, near death and the DMT entity. Yeah. So talk about it a little bit. Cool. Well, before yeah. we finish up, can you give us one last positive message? Absolutely. Uh, the message is you have nothing to fear in death. Absolutely nothing to fear in death. It is a beautiful transition. And, and I think in knowing that and try to remind that yourself of that, uh, it allows you to live life more freely and openly and honestly and live this life. You don't have to worry about death all the time. Live this life and be good to the people in your family. You're here to live life. You're here to do things in this world. And I think a lot of us are consumed with, you know, other worlds and it's fun and it's interesting and it's entertaining, but also don't forget to live this life as well. Holden, thank you for your message and thank you for being my guest. Thank you so much for having me. This was fun. It was. Thanks for watching the Jeff Mara podcast. I really appreciate you. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. And if you do, there are loyalty badges and other perks depending on your level of membership. All you need to do is click the join button underneath the video to find out more. Thank you for your support.